they were so happy when they were floating about and you all were sending your thank yous after them. Oh my God, they were so happy. They were just, um, they had a wonderful time. Um, wow. So I want to tell you guys something. Um, you asked about if the library can be physical. And they were saying, they were laughing. They're like, these people have already been to the library on their planet in past times without realizing it. It's, a, it's not always like you walk in and you're in the library. It can be you go into a bookstore and you somehow are guided to a specific book that's not even in the right section. And it's marked down to a preposterously low amount and the bookstore owner doesn't even know, like, I don't recall ever seeing that book. How weird. That's the library coming in. And um, I, I don't know how many of you know about, like when my brother and sister and I used to go in the library when we were kids. Uh, you know, we grew up here in the woods, and there's a creek below us with a little pond, very little. <laughs> and um, and next to the pond, as long as I've been alive, there's been this big tree, like big, 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 big tree, but not tall like a redwood, not quite as big around, like maybe uh, six feet around, and about... I don't know, 10, 12, 15 feet tall, which is short here with all the oaks around us. And this tree had all these vines always growing over it, like roses and honeysuckles. And there are always all kinds of animals in the tree and um, like fairies and mischievous elves. And there was a door in the tree. So imagine like the Keebler uh, elf tree mixed with Narnia and real magic. But my brother and sister and I always saw this tree. Like this tree was there physically. The three of us have always seen this tree and we would go in it together. We'd open the door and go in and we would be in the Akashic Library. Inside the library changed visual. It didn't always look the same when we went in. But we'd go in and there was one very roly-poly man with like a fringe of hair that kind of stuck out a little bit and he had glasses, little like half moon glasses. And uh, he was always so nice and always so helpful to us. And then there was a tall skinny fellow with a shock of white hair, but he had pince nez glasses that he kept in a ribbon in his pocket and he'd pull them out and put them on and examine us. And he was like the store owner, the manager. And we'd go running in there, give us a book, give us a book, we want a story. And they'd reach and they'd pull out books for us to read. And uh, we used to go running around the Akashic Library playing hide and seek and tag and bugging all the librarians and exploring. So like, I have seen this tree physically, like it is physically there. And it is there, like my whole life, I go down there and I see it. And then um, I guess around eight years ago, um, seven years, six years ago, eight years ago, um, this pond, for some reason, every time we go there, whatever rocks we need are always at the surface of the pond. But the depth of the pond has never gone down. But imagine, you know, nearly 60 years of us pillaging it for these big rocks that we use for our landscaping, you know, and always the perfect rocks. And I don't know where they come from or what, but beautiful rocks are always rising up from this pond. So we're uh, re-edging the driveway and my mom sends me uh, down there and my youngest son to like grab some rocks from the pond. And I'm grabbing rocks and I look and the tree's not there. I'm like, I went up, there's this big empty space. Okay, densely wooded area and one big empty space about eight feet wide, nothing growing on it. And I ran up and I'm like, hey mom, where's the tree? She's like, what tree? I'm like, the tree down there. 
She's like, what tree? I'm like, you know, the big tree with all the roses and the honeysuckles and the fairies and the door. And I'm like, oh my God. She said, there's never been a tree there. Nothing grows in that spot. Nothing has ever grown in that spot. I'm like, and I have not seen the tree there since. The energy of it is there, but it disappeared for me when I started just going into the library all on my own all the time, and I stopped using the tree. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the library can be physical. It certainly can be physical. Um, I've heard stories from people um, like in old villages in like Italy, like wandering through an old village and going into this old bookstore. And it's just like the most wonderful bookstore you ever imagined. And then my friend went back there and there was nothing there. So <laughs> it can be physical. Is the are trees that I mean what frequency are trees because I've been hearing this and back in some book the same thing is there a frequency level that they're at they're um they're like all frequencies okay. they're all frequencies <laughs> it's okay the librarians love the dogs <laughs> Trees can connect with every frequency of nature and dimension. The only frequencies they don't connect with are like pollution, machinery, you know, things that, that harm nature. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you're encouraged. They say, tell them. We are all encouraged to go and do a little research or practice or do ceremonies with anyone who's like an indigenous practitioner from anywhere in the world because they know how to connect with nature and how to connect with trees and how to connect. So they're like druids, shamans, you know, anyone like that, medicine women, uh, Wicca women. They're like not the modern ones the ancient, the real ones, herbalists, um, any of these people start connecting with them and ask them about trees and you'll get interesting stories. Ask them to go with you when they're doing ceremonies or for you to go with them when they're doing ceremonies. I mean, these days, I guess it's more virtual but well, there are ceremonies with trees. I, I, I cut two trees down and told a, a friend of mine, and she goes, well, did you bless it first? I was like, forgot. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. A couple of years ago, I led a ceremony. Um, there was an area in our neighborhood where three houses were plowed down and, you know, again, we live in the woods, which meant a lot of the woods surrounding them were just like torn up and um, McMansions are being put up in their place. And um, I went out there and I emptied out, I brought in the Prana Shakti and then I brought in the librarians and um, I had spent time practicing with different Druidic and shamanic healers to prepare for it. But what happened was like really unique. I, I sat there and I spoke to the trees and I apologized to the trees for the harm that humans had brought to them. Uh, in one house, the grandfather tree, I mean the grandmother tree of the area had been torn down. And this was like the head tree of our neighborhood had been torn down. And all the trees were in a state of shock, you know, and horror and confusion. So I went there and I was talking with the trees and I apologize. And the craziest thing happened, like deers and squirrels and all these animals started coming out of the woods and they're hanging out in this construction site, staring at me. And the birds stopped singing and they're in the branches staring at me. It was the craziest thing. And I just, I talked with the trees and I spoke with everyone. I apologized to the animals that their homes had been destroyed. 
and um, we looked at the energy, the grid between the trees, and we saw where all the holes were in the network, mm -hmm. and we sewed it up together. We sewed it up. And we did this ceremony where we just restitched all the energy network. And one of the trees volunteered to become the new head tree. And all, you know, and then when I was done, I'm there and I'm like, I literally had about, I don't know, 40 or 50 animals there of mm. different varieties. It was crazy. I mean, I wish I had like photographed it, <laughs> but I had to hold the energy and, you know, they would be like another stupid human and taken off, but um, we sewed up the energy in the area and we rewove it together and it, it made a difference. So this tree magic the librarians talk about, I hadn't put that together, like it's only now when I'm talking, I'm putting all these like things together myself. Um, but yeah, if they're saying go and ask trees to teach you stuff, that is a huge adventure that they're challenging us with. Okie doke. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions or anything? I do, uh, Benita. Um, the the um, librarians tell us to or they told us a few weeks ago about mandalas and, um, you know, pray to your love mandala or send love to your love mandala and ask that to be sent through the universe and to the librarians and so forth. And then I can get energy back through. So are there other mandalas? I mean, is there uh -huh. a gratitude mandala? And, uh, you know, um, you know, I mean, is that just one of many different kinds of mandalas? Oh, yeah. There's like billions of mandalas on our planet. Um, a few years ago, I, um, for whatever reason, elephants started asking me to meditate with them. And so, uh, you know, and elephants are one of the guardians of our planet. So I was meditating with the elephants and the elephant collective, like they have their own non-physical guides and guardians like we do everyone does the elephant collective channeled through me and they said okay we're going to channel through you get ready so every day i'm meditating with elephants getting ready i didn't know what to expect i thought that they were going to i don't know teach us what it's like to be an elephant in a 3d way i don't instead it was the spirit of elephant came through and um, I don't know if any of you all were there, like Rosemaria, I don't know if you were there when we did that. I have the video, I'll load it up um, with tonight's meditation. I'll, I'll load it up to the, and I'll email it out to you guys also. Um, but it was the soul of the elephant, what it's like to be the spirit of the elephant and part of the elephant collective and how the elephant mandala, every being on our planet has their own specific mandala. So the elephant mandala does not necessarily cover the whole world. It covers where elephants are. And they were showing the areas where elephants are enslaved or in zoos, they're not connected with the mandala. And what the elephants were asking us to do was help, help them power up their mandala to reach the enslaved elephants. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. you can pick any mandala and just start resonating with it. But I'll send you guys that one because that's a an example of how to help it. Um, the mandala okay. of like peace. There are areas where it's a little crumbly because there's not enough love and peace and or not enough peace energy to maintain it. So imagine like global highway systems that are a little crumbly in certain areas. So we got to send repair energy there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, well, thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bonita. Thank you. That was so wonderful. Listen, oh, have really. a wonderful night, and um, we'll see where we go from here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.